It's Madden NFL 23, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Giants and the Jags. All that and more coming up next. The calendar may say autumn, but temperatures are still pretty sweltering here in North Florida. But the good news, the radar is clear. Still, hydration will be key today at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. Today, we've got a matchup here in pivotal week seven between the New York Giants and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at this Jaguar team. We're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. On the other side of the field for the visiting Giants, they come in right at 500, looking to get that win to bump them back above 500. This game means a lot to them because of what you just talked about. When you can bump yourself over 500, it's a lot of optimism in your building as you move forward in the season. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season, Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. Jacksonville's offense trots out here for the first time, and all eyes go right to number 16. Now in his second season as the team's face of the franchise, Trevor Lawrence. And the numbers were not pretty. I mean, they don't look right. When you throw two interceptions, no touchdown passes, there's no way to really make that work. But I thought there were a lot of positives in watching his game tape. I think he's close to putting out a good performance. Let's see if he can flip those numbers around in this game. And, of course, rally his team to a win. They go play action with Lawrence. They'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Here's the second-year man from Clemson, Travis Etienne. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. The Jaguars hit one and five, really struggling here to start the year. And they come in in the midst of a pretty bad stretch here. Losers at five straight. And far be it for me to go ahead and go gloom and doom, right? If they fall down seven and nothing, 14 and nothing, all of a sudden, the cycle starts all over again. So the best way out of this for them, they need something to happen positive early in this game. That's a great way to help break this losing skid. On first down, right back DTN. And he is going to lose yardage here. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Lawrence's throw here into the hands of Jones. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 14. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. After the sack on first down, Lawrence over the middle complete. It's Jones. This will be play number nine coming up on this relatively long opening drive as they look to convert on third down. Buying time to his left. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down just inside the five-yard line. Well, hang on a second here, because on that last play, it appears one of the Giants shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Being chased out left. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Marvin Jones. His second touchdown on the season. And the Jaguars' decision to go for it pays off with six points. The losing streak had taken on a life of its own, and I think it infiltrates a team when you're on that much of a slide. But this group has managed to focus, come out early, and put a touchdown on the board. They look, they look like they mean business in this one. They do now the key, holding on to that attitude, because, man, that streak has been a struggle for them. Riley Patterson now for the extra point.
And this is up and good. The score now 7 nothing Jaguars. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And we see James. He will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Here come the Giants, led out by their former sixth overall pick out of Duke back in 2019. Daniel Jones under center. Okay, I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance. I thought he played fairly well overall. The, the numbers won't knock your socks off. Two touchdown passes and an interception. The bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with a receiver? They'll start out on the ground. It's Saquon Barkley. Tackle made by Devin Lloyd, the linebacker. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Giant football, and we're ready to begin the second quarter. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Throwing Jones. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now Jones. And a throw there going to be incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. On the return, here's Agnew. Come out a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Trevor Lawrence in the Jacksonville offense, ready to go back to work. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes, too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head, head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a round, too. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. He's exceeded his receiving yards from a week ago, and we're still in the first half. It's a first down. We remind you in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Throwing on second and eight. Lawrence looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Jones. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 24-yard line. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Now Lawrence to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Evan Ingram from three yards out. And the Jags have taken a two-touchdown lead now. And there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to 0. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And we see James, he will now return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. 
And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trained. And the ball is out. Jones got hit and lost it. And the Jags grab it. And he brings this one back. A final return from Jacksonville score. Well, Charles, not only did they fumble the football, but they're starting to fumble away their chances here a little bit. We've got a three-score ball game now here in the first half. The last thing you want to do, partner, is help the other team with what are avoidable turnovers. You want to hang on to the football because you're already playing against a good team. You're just making it easier for them by giving them extra opportunities. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And it's now 21 to nothing. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And we see James, he will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. The Giants now going to take over late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Meanwhile, Jones' throw brought in by Bellinger. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Jones on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Here now is second and 10, again for the 41. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw again. And that is incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. Agnew now to return. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Jaguars ready to go on offense for the final time in this first half. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. And looking for Kirk, but this pass is intercepted. And the Giants are going to take possession of the football. So the first thing that crossed my mind is why didn't they just sit on the lead and take it to the locker room? They're in good shape. Absolutely. And from this spot on the field, now you've given the other side a chance for points here going into intermission. Yeah, you changed the momentum of the game, and it's something you did not need to do. Throwing on first. This one winds up to be incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Looking to throw. Jones incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. The chance of wasting this great starting field position. A real threat. This is third and long. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Now Jones is hit. He lost the football. And the Jags grab it. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. He already had the one fumble loss, so now two fumbles lost here in this first half. Not setting the pace the way that you want it done. I mean, here in the first half, already twice the ball's come out and hit the turf. Got to find a way to take care of it. Otherwise, they may have to start thinking about maybe someone different at that position. Message received here. No need to wait. We're going to skip halftime and get right back to the action. Here comes the third quarter. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. And we see James. He will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. The Giants about set to go to begin this third quarter. 
Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive? on that play sheet for any of those coordinators. They just don't have it, right? You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. Well, they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And here's Gillen on now to punt as he gets this one away. Pulled in at the 24. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. So here are the Jaguars to take over on offense. They've dropped five straight coming in. So right now cherishing this lead. And they've got the football as well. First and 10. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. A second and ten, fourth coming here. Third quarter action from Jacksonville. Off the play fake. Here's Lawrence. That would complete downfield to Kirk. Touchdown, Jaguars! This offense, they were dynamic in the first half. The halftime break, that didn't slow them down at all. Big strike here in the third quarter. It's almost as if they were saying, it's not just our skill in the first half is getting this done, it's confidence as well. And confidence has taken over this game in a big way. How about these strikes that we're seeing? Extra point try now for Patterson. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And we see James, he will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Another drive coming up for New York's offense. Well, the disparity in this game, it just seems to grow with each possession here, Charles. They are really struggling. They have not put up a single point, and on the other side, the points keep piling up and up and up. So you know the frustration level has to be rising, right? So they've got to find a way to quell that because otherwise, they certainly won't get anything done in this one. Keep diving deeper into the offensive playbook, but bottom line is don't quit competing. A first down carry for Barkley. Gets around him, and he's got room. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. They keep it with Barkley on first down, and he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Forced, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Josh Allen, the outside linebacker, coming up to drop him for a loss of a full 10 yards. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game. But it falls down to the ground incomplete. Throwing again on second and 10. Jones. And his throw is going to be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. 
So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here in the turnover on downs. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. Now it looks like he'll throw here. And oh, he almost had his second pick of the game. Probably should have. And he's frustrated as it falls incomplete. To throw on second and ten. Lawrence, quick slant caught by Kirk. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. And they have been unstoppable this afternoon, Charles. They just went after them from the start. And pass plays like we just saw, they're continuing their dominance here despite the big lead in the fourth quarter. And that they have in every way. And plays like that across all phases of the game, they've just been effortless for them in this one. And that's what's helped them build such a large lead and allowed them to smile as this game continues. And they'll indeed take a knee. And they will take a knee here. Two running plays, each lose a yard. They'll need to do much better now on third and 12. And they take a knee. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. But they absolutely pitch a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So for the Jags, it may not be too late to salvage their season as the win moves them to 2-5 and five now on the year. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Denver Broncos next week. Meanwhile, for the Giants, they fall a game under the 500 mark at 3-4 and four through seven games. And they'll be on the road next week as they get a date with the Seahawks in Seattle.